بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله تعالى وما أنفقتم من شيء فهو يخلفه وقال تعالى وما تنفقوا من خير فلأنفسكم وما تنفقون إلا ابتغاء وجه الله وما تنفقوا من خير يوفى إليكم وأنتم لا تظلمون Last week we also talked about some of these ayahs and ahadith that are in this chapter of spending the wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not keeping everything just for ourselves, trying to hide as much as we can and collect as much as we can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Sabah, in Quran, as Imam Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi have quoted this ayah, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Whatever you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace that for you. This is a matter of belief. This is a matter of iman. It's a matter of trust. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, if you spend it, I will replace it. Many times someone tells us, here give me this, You have something in your hand, he says, give it to me, and I will give it back to you. In many cases we think that this person is just joking, he may not give it back to me, he will give it to the other person. And you may not trust that person and don't give him what he's asking for. And there might be some people that we know that if they would tell us this, We should trust them and we'll just give it to them and they will give it back to us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that whatever you give it for my sake, فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it for you. Many times we fail to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we feel I may not get it back. And this shows our weakness in trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our weakness in our faith and in our iman. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, if you give it away for my sake, that's the condition. I will give it back to you. You will get it back. And in many cases, you won't get the same thing back, you will get something much better than that back. But two conditions are there. One is, we give it only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to get something better back. You are not giving it away or giving it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or giving it out with the intention of, I'm giving it so that I will get something better than this. You give it just with the intention of, you are giving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are not getting, you are not looking for anything in return except the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a condition that we have to give it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for any other reason. And the second condition is, We must have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of giving it, 
that I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whose sake I'm giving, that insha'Allah, He is not going to put me in hardship because of giving this out. When it comes to giving out, the level of people's trust and iman is different. <laughs> and every person should give according to his level of iman. Of course, we cannot read few ayahs and then go out and give all of our wealth out. And next day we start begging and start cursing our souls for giving all of that out. We find two different incidents during the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once a sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he gave a gold, a piece of gold that was almost as big as an egg. He gave that to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is everything I have in my life. I don't have anything other than this. That's all I have. And I'm giving this to you as a charity, as a sadaqah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so upset with that person, he took it from him and he threw it back at the person. He threw that thing back at the person, that gold back at the person. And he said, today you want to give this out and tomorrow you will start begging people? Go and keep your gold, we don't need it. And at the same time we find another incident of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what did you leave for your family? And he said, I left Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's all I left. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted all of that from Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is giving everything, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is willingly accepting it and is giving, making dua for him. Another person comes and gives something and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives, gets upset with that person and he throws that thing back to that person that I don't need anything from you. What's the difference? The difference is, number one, when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not mention it by himself to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I brought everything and I don't have anything other, other than this. He came and he just quietly gave it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what did you leave for your family, he did not say nothing. He said, I left Allah and the name of Allah and the name of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa That is enough for my family. They don't need this worldly material. But that man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number one, he's mentioning it without any questioning. He's just saying, I brought everything. That's all I have. Number two, he's saying that he doesn't have anything other than this. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, we have the name of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that is enough for us. It showed the difference of iman and difference of these people's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted that from Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, knowing that he is a type of person who has full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith, Ana inda zanni abdi bi hadith khudusi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana inda zanni abdi bi. I deal with people according to what they think about me. If people think that I give, I would replace it for them, I would do the same for them. And if people have doubt about it, then they don't get anything from it. And this works in every situation. When we don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't get it. Because we did not trust Him. And when we, when we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills that trust and He does whatever we trust Him for. So of course this was an important point that we need to remember. We, cannot, we should not go and give everything out. But at the same time, 
normally we go to the other extreme in our lives, and that is we try to keep everything for ourselves and don't like to spend anything. This quality of miserness is one of the worst qualities in Islam. Is one of the worst things that a mu'min, a mu'min, a believer can have in his heart, in his mind, of just trying to collect everything and whenever he sees something he feels this should belong to me. Why other people have this? I should have this. And then shaitan plays with our mind. He says, if you have all of this, then you would be able to help Muslims throughout the world. If I have so much wealth, if I have the wealth that those, some of those people have, I will be helping the Muslim ummah, I will be doing this and this. But we have to see what is it that we are doing with whatever we have. There are so many people who need dress, who don't have proper dresses. Are we sharing our dresses with those people? Can we say we don't have any extras? And if we do, then are we sharing it with those people? How many of us have large enough houses that can be shared with some other people? Are we sharing it with those people? So we do we think that at this time, because we have only 100,000, we are not sharing it. If we will have million, then we will share it. How much are we going to give out of million? 100,000? So at least give now one dollar out of thousand. Give thousand dollars out of the 100,000 that you have. But we are not willing to do that at this time, which is a clear proof that it's only a talk. It's only promises from shaitan. Who's telling us, if you will have this way, then you should do it. At this time, you are not ready for it, and you cannot do it at this time. These are games that shaitan play with us. So, the attitude of holding everything back to our souls, and trying to keep the best for our souls, and whenever we look something better, we always try to grab those, is not a good attitude. It's not a good quality to have. We should always have a quality of spending, giving it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we have, try to give it out, share it with other people. And once we have that quality in us, then we will always be having the importance of spending our wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will lose this importance of this worldly gain after which everyone is running and people are day, day and night are just running to collect more and more of it. And people are happy. Those who have 100,000 in their account, they are much happier than those who have 1,000. And those who have million in their account, they feel that I really have got something, but I need one more million, and then I will feel that I have enough, that I, can, that I was working for, and really I have achieved something in my life. But all of this means nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us in Quran, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again and again reminds us in the hadith that your wealth, your real wealth is the one that you spend it. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went home and he knew that they had slaughtered a goat that day. So they had slaughtered a goat for themselves, to have some meat for themselves that day. And of course there were a lot of poor people in Medina Munawwara, so they also knew that these people slaughtered a goat today. So everyone is going and knocking at the door. Can, do you have some food for us? And here they are. They, those people were nice people. Straightforward people. Truthful people. And people who really did not care about this worldly gain. So they started giving it out. So someone came, they gave him a little meat. Another person came, they gave him a little more. Another third person came, they gave him some more. Finally, when it was... The time of dinner, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went home and he asked, What do you have? He knew that of course people came to ask for meat. So he asked them, What's left from that meat, from that goat that we had today, that we slaughtered today? They said, Ya Rasulullah, everything is gone except for one of the legs of that goat. That's all we have, a leg. Rest of it is all gone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Everything is left except for the leg. We have the whole thing except for that leg. Because that leg we are going to eat it, 
that meat that we have over there that's left over, we are going to eat it and it will go and will will have no use for it. I mean, it's a bathroom. It's dirt. But rest of it, we will get it back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we got the reward for it. So ours, the real meat that is ours is the one that we have spent it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have preserved it for akhirah in akhirah we will get it in jannah we will get it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises whatever you spend here you will get it over there also of course many times we get it here but you get it over there for sure so that's really ours and whatever we just eat it up for ourselves that's not ours that's something that we just have wasted it we just use it so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, if you really like something, you really like to keep it, you really like to use it, try to give it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the hadith, some poor sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, when they heard a lot of virtues of giving their wealth out in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, we like to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as the other wealthy people do. We do as much salah as we can. We do as much ibadah as we can. But all of other brothers, our brothers who are wealthy, they are doing the same thing. Look at their competition now. They are not competing in collecting more. They are competing in getting more ibadah, more reward. So they are saying, Ya Rasulullah, we have a complaint that these wealthy people, they do as much salah as we do. They do all the ibadah just the way we do. The fast, they, give, they perform salah, they perform hajj, all of these things. But in addition to all of this, they give sadaqah, they give a lot of charity, they spend a lot of wealth out also. So Ya Rasulullah, tell us something. That way we can catch up to these people and can get the same reward of those people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to these people, after every salah, if you recite subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, and Allahu Akbar 34 times, you will get as much reward as they are getting by spending their wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these people were very happy they went back because they don't have money to spend. They went back and next salah, these after the salah, as normal they used to, as they used to get up, the rest of the people got up and these people are sitting and reciting some subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So now those wealthy sahaba who didn't know nothing about it, those people saw that some people today are sitting for longer than usual. And they are reading something. So they waited also. Let's find out. After these people finished reading and they got up, they went and asked them, what were you people reading? Oh, we were reading the subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. What's the virtue of it? The virtue of it is this. And they mentioned the whole story to them. So, after the next salah, now even those wealthy people are sitting and they are reciting, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Now these poor people are looking around and all of these wealthy people are reciting the same thing. They went back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah. <coughs> these people started reciting the same thing that we were reciting. And now they started getting that reward also. Ya Rasulullah, tell us something different that they should not be able to do it and we should do it all. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ That's a blessing of Allah, He gives it to whomever He likes. So, you cannot compete with those people in these things. And this tells us, the competition of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een was in spending. In one of the occasions, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Encourage Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een to spend something in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali radiallahu anhu says at that time, I did not have anything on me. I had no money at all. No food at home. Nothing. So he went especially to look for work. He found a job. He saw a Jew who was getting the water out of the well and watering his garden. 
Ali radiallahu anhu went and asked the Jew, do you need any work? He said, sure. Instead of getting the water out for me, do this work for me. I'll give you one date for each bucket that you will get out. Ali radiallahu anhu started doing that work. And of course, you know, taking one bucket out worth more than a date. But Ali radiallahu anhu thought, at least let me just do this to get something. He got seven buckets out and he got seven dates. He went to the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still encouraging Sahaba Rizwanullahi alayhi wa to give some charity, some donation. To get that reward of charity and spending the wealth of Allah in, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he went and he gave all of those seven days to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, this is what I can afford and this is sadaqah on my behalf. Amazing. We have thousands sitting in our accounts. We have so many things in our home, just in our, around our home. Things that we just keep on kicking them away from our way when we walk in the house because we don't know where to put them. Sometimes we throw it here, then we throw it there. Let's put it on top of the fridge. It's time for cleaning. Throw it away from the fridge. Put it somewhere else. Put it on the shelf. And now you are cleaning your shelf, so throw it somewhere else. We don't even know where to put these things. And we never think... Let me go and give it to a person who might need it. Put it a place, at a place where people will use it better and have a better use for it than I have it at my home. We may throw it in the garbage, but shaitan told us don't give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't spend none of this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't give it to a poor person. Use it as much as you can. This is a trick of the shaitan because the reward of spending our wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. In fact, one of the greatest things of achieving the reward and not only achieving the reward of protecting ourselves against the hellfire is giving something out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the hadiths, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِتَّقُوا النَّارُ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَةِ Protect yourself against the hellfire. Even if it is by spending half a date. Could you imagine that half a date can protect you against the hellfire? If you have one date and you think that you cannot, there is nothing you can do to protect yourself against the hellfire, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, eat half of it and give out half of it out in the path of Allah to a poor person, to someone else who can use it properly and who can make some use of it you will be protecting yourself against the hellfire even just by giving that half a day out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is half a day? Which simply means even if it is a penny. Don't look down even at a penny. If you have a penny, you have a dollar, you have very few things that you have, you own, give just little out of that, that might be also a way to protect ourselves against the hellfire. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran al kareem هَا أَنْتُمْ هَا أُولَىٰ تُدْعَوْنَ لِتُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Here you are, that you are invited to spend your wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يَبْخَلْ Some of you will try to hold it back. Some of you will try to hold it back. وَمَنْ يَبْخَلْ فَإِنَّمَا يَبْخَلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ Whoever will hold it back, he's holding it back against himself. Why against himself? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, every morning, every morning an angel comes out who is text announcing. And the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Malakani and Zilan, every day two angels come down, فيقول أحدهما One of these angels say اللهم أعط منفقا خلفا يا الله Whoever he spends his wealth for your sake replaces for him replace that thing for him ya Allah and give him more than what he has spent and the other person says Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa ya Allah whoever is holding his wealth back and he's not he knows the need for spending it for your sake but still he's holding it back ya Allah destroy his wealth angels are making the dua assigned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these angels are assigned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
one of them saying, Ya Allah, whoever spends it, give it back to him, Ya Allah. And of course, we are getting the reward for it anyway. And the other angel is saying, Ya Allah, whoever holds it back to himself, destroy his world. How many times we hear that people are suffering throughout the world, in different parts of the world. A few days back, I myself saw a picture of a place in Afghanistan. It made me think, wonder, that look at the comfort that we have and see what people are going through in the world. People just like us. We are not any better than those people. I'm sure those people must be much better than us. And I have seen people, the picture shows, people are living in tents and there is snow all around. Snow all around them. And they are living in tents. It's difficult for us to live in these houses without heat. Without having snowshoes. Without having proper jackets. Proper clothing. Proper blankets. Those people that do not even have a house. Living in tent. How do you think these people sleep? How do you think they manage it? They manage to make wudu. They manage to have hot water. I was talking to a person yesterday. That imagine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us nice comfortable houses. Gives us all the means of comfort that we need. Then He gives us hot water. Then He gives us alarm clock to wake up. All we need to do is use all of these comforts, wake up and do two rakah salah, then by using all of these comforts and the means of comfort, and we do two rakah salah the tahajjud, and He gives us so much reward for it, whereas really it should be that if you do it, I won't punish you. If you won't do it, I will punish you. That should be enough. If you do it, I won't punish you. No reward. And if you won't do it, I will punish you that you have hot water, you have nice bed, you have bl- nice blankets, you have ne- nice jackets. You can take a hot shower, do whatever you want and use every mean of comfort. And we are neglecting all of these blessings. And if a person uses all of this and do something good, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, re- is rewarding that person abundantly as if we have done something great. What is that? We only use these blessings. Imagine those people. And sometimes think about those people who are living in those tents. They have small young children just like we do. Their children may also be crying of cold. Their children may also cry for going out. Not being able to walk out because it's snow all around and they don't have snowshoes. Their infants may also be crying day and night because they are too cold and parents cannot provide them with proper blankets. They don't have money to have, to even buy a glass of milk for them. Children are crying and dying just in the hands of their mothers because the mothers cannot afford to give them a sip of water or a glass of milk. And here we see our fridges are full. And still we complain. Day and night, tell me a time when you feel that you are really starving that you cannot get up. In fact, we may complain of being too full and not being able to get up. Too full, and this is why I am too sleepy. And those are the people who are not able to walk around because they have nothing to eat. With all of this, still we day and night, we are complaining. Think about those people. We really should be thinking the other way. Then let me give at least, I can really, if we have no money, if I don't have extra ten dollars in my pocket, at least let me eat half and try to save the other half so that I can save some money and send it over there to those people 
to save those people's life, at least to give them a shoe, at least to give them a blanket, at least to give them a water heater, something that they can use. They're going through all of these hardships. We're using all of these comforts of our lives. And we don't really even know what is the blessing of Allah that we're using. If the heat will turn off for some time in our homes, we start complaining. If a person has old jacket, we'll go and buy two new ones, not one, two new ones, so that we can keep one as, as an extra in case I need it some time. And those are the people really, it makes us wonder and we think about them when you especially look at these type of pictures, when you see these people have to walk barefoot on the snow. Or they have just normal slippers and they are walking in the snow. Of course they have to walk out of their homes. They have to go and work. They have to go and get some food for their families, for their children. They have to do something about it. They have to go and get some water from the well. The well is freezing. They are freezing. Their feet are freezing. And they have to do all of that work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us on the Day of Judgment about all of these blessings that we are using. That you are using it. And not only using it, misusing it. <coughs> Throw our jackets in the garbage. Throw so many new dresses into the garbage. Invite some people to our home and all the remaining food goes into the garbage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us about all of this. In fact, our own, these people that we know about, and that we see their pictures in the papers and different places, these people will also be questioning us on the Day of Judgment that instead of wasting it, why didn't you send it to me? I would have used that piece of bread to save the life of my, my child. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, that keep on spending, have a habit of spending it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because once you have the habit of spending it, then you will be always looking for people who can take it from you. And then you will be looking for people that you can spend it on. And if you don't have a habit of spending, then people are coming to your home and they are begging you. And still you keep on trying try to save as much as you can for yourself and will tell those people, I have a lot of responsibilities, I have a lot of things to do, and at this time I cannot spare nothing for you people, I'm sorry. This is what our way of life is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah of Quran al-Kareem, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Spend of the wealth that we have given you. Who has given us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Spend of what we have given you. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Before the time of your death will come. And at the time of death, the person will say, فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا أَخْفَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ Why didn't you give me some more chance? فَأَصَّدَّقْ So that I can give some charity. Give me a minute. Ya Allah, give me 30 seconds. So I can just tell my children, give half of my wealth to that masjid, and other half to that place, and give this many dollars to that place, send those much to Afghanistan, send that much to Bosnia, send that much to Somalia, and then I will give all of this to start giving my wealth out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it will be too late. Use this time. Min qabli an yati ahadakum al maut. Spend before the time of death will come. And at the time of death, the reason we will remember giving out the charity, because at that time we will receive it with our eyes that the benefit of giving charity is such great that this charity will save us against the hellfire. So that will be the request a person will put to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of death. Rabbi lawla akhartani ila ajalin qareeb. Ya Allah, why don't you give me a little more chance for a sadda so that I can give some charity to akum min as-salihin and be a virtuous servant of yours. Allah says, وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا Once the time will come, then no one gets a chance. It's too late then. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he said to Bilal radiallahu anhu and that day they had a lot of 
wealth that came from Syria. Someone sent a lot of sadaqat, donations. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Bilal radiallahu anhu, Bilal, keep on spending all of this out. And by tonight, all of this should be out. You should not keep anything with you. Bilal radiallahu anhu spent everything out. At the time of Aisha, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Bilal, did you spend everything out? He said, yes, ya Rasulullah, I gave everything out except little bit. That I saved it to pay some of our loans. Who knows in case we will have to pay loans next month and by that time we won't get anything back anymore. Well, so I saved something for that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anfiq ya Bilal. Bilal, spend that also. Spend it out. Don't keep anything. And the next word is very important. وَلَا تَخْشَ مِنْ زِلْ عَرْشِ إِقْلَالًا وَلَا تَخْشَ مِنْ زِلْ عَرْشِ إِقْلَالًا Oh Bilal, don't think that the one who has the arsh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of this arsh, is going to reduce, has any reduction of his wealth, and he won't give us in the future. Bilal, don't think about that about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spend this, Allah will give you more. As once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advising the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Asma radiallahu anha, he said to her, keep on spending your wealth. And, لا تحصي فيحصي الله عليك. Don't count always at the time of giving. Otherwise, Allah will count at the time of giving it to you also. And don't hold it back, otherwise Allah will hold it back from you. Sometime, you feel sorry for some of the people who we know and they also, and it's known about them that this is a very wealthy person. He has a lot, mashallah. And many people looking at those people, they feel, oh, I wish if I have as much as he has. But when those people talk to you, you feel that he is the poorest person in the world. And you feel sorry for that person. And especially when you know that he has all of this. He worked so hard to get all of this. And now he feels about himself, he's so poor, he doesn't have anything. You feel sorry even more for that person. That look at him, he has all of this and he still he feels that he has nothing and he feels that he's a poor man. So we are in a much better situation than him who feel, Alhamdulillah, I have a lot. And we may not even have one person of what that person has. So the greed for this wealth is something that even if the person will get the whole world, still he will feel that he's poor. He's in need. He is needy. He doesn't have anything. And if he can grab 10 more dollars, he will try to grab those. On the other hand, we find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we all know the simple life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Rasulullah sallallahu a person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to accept Islam. When he became Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Go to such and such place, and you will see a lot of goals between two mountains. Go and take all of those goals. This is a gift from me. That person went there, and he couldn't believe himself, hundreds of goats there. He took all of them, and went back to his people, and he said to his people, Aslimu. All of you people should become Muslims. فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا يَعْطِي عَطَاءَ مَنْ لَا يَخْشَ الْفَقَرُ A very important statement. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives, just like giving of a person who is never afraid of losing the world. He is not afraid of it. And who is a person who is not afraid of losing it? Is a person who will have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wealthiest person in the world at the time of giving some considerable 
amount of his wealth, he will be afraid that I'm losing that much. But the only person who won't be afraid is a person who really has his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the simple example that I can talk about something that we have seen with our own eyes is Shaykh al-Hadith, Mawla Zakariya rahmatullahi alayhi. You see the person on his wheelchair. He doesn't work. No source of income. Many people come and give him the gifts and he rejects, no, I can't accept it from you. And every day, you see hundreds of people that are eating at his place. During the month of Ramadan, thousands of people are eating at his place. And not only that people are eating at his place, when people come and there are people who are leaving and he gives them some gifts also. Some people are giving, getting a gift of thousand riyals or two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. A person comes to him and says, okay, I'll buy a land for you. And he buys a large portion of land for him. Cause hundreds of thousands. You think that this person is millionaire. It was a time when he, wanted, when he was invited by people in South Africa. So when they invited him, his condition was, there might be many conditions, but at this time I remember two conditions that are affiliated with the subject. One was, I will not accept the ticket from you people. I will pay, I will pay for my own ticket. I will pay for my ticket and the tickets of the people who will be accompanying me. That's one condition. The second condition is, I will not accept any gifts while I'm over there. Who would put those type of conditions? A person like me will be hoping, okay, at least, you know, if I don't take the ticket, at least they should be giving me some gifts. And at the end of the month or at the end of the journey, you will be waiting for some envelopes. But those people who have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He wants to give, He will just give it. And whatever belongs to me and whatever has to come to me will come to me anyway. No matter how much I reject it, it will still come to me from another way. And this is really the reality of this dunya, of the worldly gain. That as you run after it, it will run away from you. And if you run away from it, you will see it running, it after, running after you. Just like a dog. If you scare a dog, and you try to run after the dog, you will see the dog run, running away from you. And if you are scared of the dog, and you run away from the dog, you will see him following you. The wealth follows you if you run away from it. And if you try to run after it, it will, you will see it running away from you. And we will get whatever it, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for us. There is a portion of it that as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, no one would die before getting each and every drop of water and piece of rice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for him. He won't die before getting it. And the thing that's not written for us, no matter how much we try and we get the whole world to help us to get it, no one will be able to get it to us. Because that's not for us. <coughs> and the situation of wealth is really amazing. It's totally amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes He sends my wealth at your home, He sends your wealth at someone else's home. And in many cases you see Him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the wealth of the wealthiest person into the house of a very poor person. The wealth of a wealthiest person is sent into the house of the poorest person in the world. You see occasions when 
A wealthy person gets stuck somewhere. He needs a glass of water. How many times you see a person approaching you, he says, this is not my way and I never ask people for anything, but I really lost my wallet. A person is stuck on the middle of the highway. That's a type of person who has millions, but he cannot find a phone to call the tow truck at the time. And he has to beg someone for a ride. He might have to beg someone at that time for a tire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way He sends this wealth is very amazing. He sends the wealth of a rich person to a poor person's home and that person invites, that poor person invites the rich, rich person in his home and this wealthy man is eating his risk from that person's home. And all the wealth that he has, he feels that's his, he might have millions, but he ends up using only some thousands of it and then he dies, and that of it goes all to the other people. So he sent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent other people's wealth and other people's risk into that person's house. He did not even allow him to use it. All he did is, he made him work day and night for it. He was striving to earn more. He was struggling to earn more. Whether he was sick, tired, lazy, irrespective of the situation, he went to work. He gathered all of that. After gathering all of those millions, he died. And now, it, the wealth goes to those people who really were supposed to use it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way of dividing it is totally amazing. And it's something that makes us think and realize that whatever belongs to me will come to me one way or other. As Ali radiallahu anhu, one day he was walking out of, he went to the masjid and he wanted to tie his horse. But of course he was quickly, he wanted to perform two rakah salah quickly. So, he saw a person at the door of the masjid, he asked him, can you hold my horse for me? This person said, sure. So Ali radiallahu anhu went into the masjid, he performed quick two rakahs, and then he was walking out of the masjid, so he put his hand in the pocket, took some money out, thinking that I will just give it to this person for holding the horse for me. And those are the type of people who never count at the time of giving. They don't think, oh, I'm giving him too much, let me give him one dollar. Oh, this is hundred dollars bill. Let, let me find if I have one dollar. You see some people, I have seen some people, they give, a beggar comes, and he says, can you give me something? He gives him, he said, do you have some change? Yeah, okay, here are hundred dollars, give me ninety dollars back. And the dollar, and the beggar has ninety dollars to give it back also. And still he says, I don't have anything. It reminds me of Umar radiallahu anhu. Once Umar radiallahu anhu saw a man who was begging. And he's holding a bag behind him, on his shoulder. Holding a bag on his shoulder because it's a big bag. He can't just carry it in his hand, so he's putting it on his shoulder. So that person was going around and he's begging. Umar radiallahu anhu said, you need something? He said, yes. He said, put your bag down. He put the bag down and there was a lot of food in that bag. Grain, rice, uh, some uh, breads. Umar radiallahu anhu took the bag away from the person and there were a lot of camels standing over there. He threw everything in front of the camels and he made the camels eat all of that. He gave that person empty bag back and he said to him, now you go ahead and beg. Now you have a right to go and beg people. But with all of that you were carrying before on your shoulder, you had no right to go and beg people. So, this well, I was mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to us. Whatever belongs to us will come to us. We will never lose it. And whatever does not belong to us will never come to us no matter what we try to do for it. So everything has been already written for us. And there is no way we can change those things and get more than what is for us or get less than what is already written for us. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this wealth in different ways. All we have to realize, I was telling you about Ali radiallahu anhu. He was coming out of the masjid. And those were the people who would never think how much they are giving out. So he put his hand in the pocket and he thought, whatever I have, let me just give it to this person because he did a favor to me. So as he walked out of the masjid, that person is not there anymore. The horse is not there. So he gave that money to another person and he said to that person, go and buy a horse for me. So that person went to the market. He bought a horse, brought it back to Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu asked him, where did you get the horse from? He said, I bought it from the market. He said, this is my horse. And that tells us, that person would have got that money this way or the other way. Those dollars that whatever he got, they were written for him. Few minutes earlier, he would, got, he would have got it in a halal way, as a gift. But he changed the direction, he took that horse, and he went and he sold it. That was haram for him. And now he got the same money, but from a haram source. The same money. He would have got it a few minutes earlier in a right way. A few minutes later, in a haram way. So we, have to, we will get whatever we want. Sometimes you might see some chocolate, some candy, some food sitting there. You say, Let me eat of it quickly. And a few minutes later, a person who owns it, he comes and says, Do you want to eat something? And he says, No, no, I'm, uh, I'm full. We would have got the same thing a few minutes later in a right way. So, whatever is for us, it has to come to us. As once long time back we were talking about different subjects and I gave you an example of sometime you hold a glass of water in your hand each and every drop of water Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that where it should go each and every drop of water comes from this rain or from the oceans from a well from streams wherever it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where it's supposed to go you hold a glass of water in your hand and you think that I'm going to drink this water. But there are few drops of that water that are not for us. And they do not belong to us. They are not part of our risk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned for us before creating us. All of a sudden someone pushes you. And few drops of water drip off that glass. And now you drink the rest of the water. Those drops of water that fell off the glass, it wasn't coincident. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what's happening. You fill that glass of water that was mixed with all of that water, but that little water, two, three drops of water, it, they were not for you. So you will never be able to drink it. Something will happen that will fall off, uh, fall off the glass, and then you will go ahead and drink the rest of it that belongs to you. Sometimes is not even drops, not full drops. There might be some sprinkles of water in there that do not belong to us. Sprinkles of water that are spread throughout the cup and throughout the glass that do not belong to us. And you sit and drink. You are drinking and all of a sudden you had to sneeze. Those sprinkles of water will fly off your mouth that did not belong to you. And you will drink the rest that belong to you. This is how the risk is assigned. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, keep on spending whatever you have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't hold it back to yourself, because whatever you have, if it belongs to you, then you will be using it. And if it doesn't belong to you, it will go to someone else. You better spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So through that way, it will, get to, it will get to that person, and you will get the reward also, and you will be protecting yourself against the hellfire. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba Rizwanullahi alayhi wa sallam Thalathatun uqsimu alayhin I swear by God there are three things they happen the way I'm mentioning it. Three things. I swear by God they happen exactly the way I'm mentioning it. And what are those three things? Ma naqasat sadaqatun min maal Charity never reduces, reduces the wealth. According to our calculation, it does. 
out of thousand dollars, if you are giving five hundred out, so how much you have? Five hundred. Wasn't it reduced? Yeah, it was reduced. But believe me, with these five hundred dollars, you will achieve more things than you can get by thousand dollars. Ma naqasat sadaqatun min mal. Sadaqa never reduces the wealth. وَمَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّا The second thing. Whenever a person forgives other people, someone insulted you, someone tried to hurt you, and you forgive that person, someone cursed at you, you forgive the person. Allah will give you more honor and respect. Our nafs and shaitan tells us that if you forgive the person, then people will think you are like this. If you won't talk back to that person, if you are not going to take revenge from that person, if you won't try to, uh, if you don't, if you won't curse back at that person, people feel that oh, as we may call it, you are a chicken, you are afraid. Don't be afraid. Just you are right. Go ahead and say it. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says no. If you forgive, Allah will give you more honor and respect. Number three. وَمَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Whoever will put himself down for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exalt his status in this life and in the akhirah. It normally seems that if you put yourself down, then people will look down at you also. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, No, I swear, if you put yourself down for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exalt your status in this life and in the akhirah.